just get yourself comfortable, don't you? I just have a few minutes, Fred. Oh, here comes Biza. Hi, big boy. Hi. I love you. Yes, I love you. I love you, Fred. Yes. Okay, I got a film. Lay down. Biza, sit down. Lay down. Come on, big boy. Oh, hi! You're so handsome! Hi! I have double the doodles! Double the doodle love! You want to be on YouTube, Bisa? You want everybody to see how handsome you are? This boy has the kindest, most gentlest nature about him. He is such a sweet love. Gwen! No! Gwen, where are you going? Oh, you're going to get more comfortable? Okay. Good job. Yes, Abisa. He's my son's dog. Oh, bye! Thank you for visiting. I'm not against using books in a DIY. I call it being creatively artistic. Welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose, Yes, in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today, I'm going out on a limb and I'm doing another DIY using a book. Now I know that some people are against using books and DIYs, but to me, I feel like it's being creatively artistic and I don't think that it is defacing a book. Dollar Tree's got the perfect books for DIYing, and today's DIY is one that is not only gonna serve as a decor piece, but it serves another purpose as well. This is one you are not gonna wanna miss. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let's do some Dollar Tree DIYing on a budget using their books. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. For this DIY, I'll be using four books. Four books that are the same. I wanted to go with a longer, wider book. Also a book that has a thicker binding that's about an inch wide. What's great about this book, Dollar Tree had a lot of them, but when you take the sleeve off, you are left with Yes, a blank slate. No image or patterns that need to be covered up, which is perfect. There's a little bit of writing on the binding, but that's okay. I wanted to pay a bit of a tribute to Deborah Campbell here, who is the author of this book, and thank her for the use of her book in today's DIY. Thank you, Deborah. I'm gonna start off by opening up the book and just flipping one page over, giving it a good crease there. You're going to need some Mod Podge or white glue. You can find this small bottle at Dollar Tree. I'm going to go in with a paintbrush and I'm going to apply a good healthy amount of Mod Podge to the pages of the book. I want to hold the book in a way that is going to keep the pages even with each other. If you lay the book flat, your pages are going to be glued at an angle. So you want to hold your book in a way that it would look when it's closed so you can glue all those pages together nice and evenly and straight. And it's best just to really hold the pages together and the book together so those pages don't move and start off with the edges themselves. Once I've got the pages glued, I am gonna go in and paint that top page. Did I say paint? Oh my goodness, really? I've had way too much coffee. We're gonna glue that top page. We're not even gonna glue it, really. We're just gonna put a nice coat of Mod Podge on that top page, sealing it. My word, today probably isn't the best day for a voiceover, but we're doing this. 
This is gonna need a bit of time to dry. At the time, I thought it was a bright idea to use my wet Mod Podge paintbrush to hold the book cover open. I did realize it in time and saved my paintbrush. Once it's dry, we are good to go. Look at that. Our pages are glued together. They are stuck to the back of the book. We've got the one free page here, which is just what we need. Again, I'm gonna give it a good crease and we are gonna get to hollowing out this book. To hollow it out, I'm gonna measure out three quarters of an inch from all four edges of the book, if that makes any sense. And I'm gonna do that starting off with the length of the book and just draw a couple lines just to keep it nice and straight. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom edge and the top edge as well, keeping all those edges even, measuring them out again at three quarters of an inch. And this is what you should be left with. Yep, this right here, perfect, right? Now taking a safety cutter, that's what I call it. I know some disagree, but that's what I call it. You're gonna want a good fresh blade on this. Using the ruler as a guide, I'm gonna go ahead and cut, cut, slice, yeah, cut, slice right along the lines that I made with my pencil. And I'm gonna do that on all four sides. The cover wouldn't stay closed, so I grabbed this handy notepad. That's awesome. And just stuck it there. It's gonna do what I need it to do. And I'm gonna do this on all four sides of the book. And this is going to help us, yes, hollow out our book. Once you've got those first set of pages out, it's pretty easy to cut the rest of the pages out just using that edge that you've already cut as a guide. It goes pretty quickly, you'd be surprised. I think I was able to cut probably 10 to 15 pages out at a time. I know it's terrible. I, This is the part I think that I felt a little guilty on was cutting the pages, but in the end, this is going to be an amazing piece and Deborah Campbell and four of her books are going to be a permanent part of the decor in my house. So again, thank you, Deborah Campbell. In all honesty, it only took about 20 minutes to hollow out this book. It came out pretty clean because I used a fresh razor. If you wanna take some Mod Podge and run it along these inside edges, you totally can. I'm not going to for video purposes. I wanna keep this DIY moving. I'm gonna take a blank piece of copy paper, just something cheap, put it under that cover because I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of, yes, hazelnut. Surprise, surprise, right? And this book is gonna get a good base coat of this hazelnut on all three sides. I almost said all four sides, haha. -ha. Yes, just one coat is really all I'm gonna go with because once I've got that base coat on, I'm gonna go in with, yes, some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of cashew. Love cashew, you all know that. For this coat with the cashew, I'm gonna use the dry brush stroke technique, which in definition really is just not putting a ton of paint on the paintbrush and doing long strokes along whatever surface it is that you are using this technique on. And so for this book, I'm not looking for full coverage. I'm not looking for perfection. I am just looking to give it that aged, distressed, weathered look. And that's how you can easily achieve this. I will say though, when you do use the dry brush stroke, you do end up with a harsher look. So you are gonna wanna go in with a light grade sandpaper. You can get a nice bunch of sandpaper at Dollar Tree and you're gonna wanna run over, I guess that top coat of cashew, just kind of softening it up, bringing through more of that hazelnut on the binding and on the edges. And that is where you're really gonna see that aged weather distress look come in. When you sand, there is some paint dust left behind. So just taking a damp paper towel, you're gonna wanna wipe over that, getting all that extra dust off, the paint dust. Like I said, I did do four books. I'm gonna stack them. The top book is gonna be a regular book and the second book will be the hollowed out book just to kind of hide our secret hiding spot more that's not so secret because it's all over YouTube now, haha. <laughs> to the bindings of these books, I wanted to put kind of an inspirational saying because I'm all about that these days. So I am using a vinyl decal that I cut out with my Cricut, but don't be put off by that. Come on now, you know I'm gonna give you alternatives because I always do and I've got a few for you. 
Dollar Tree has the most amazing rub-on transfer letter packs. The great thing about these is they come with more than one of each letter, which is great. You're gonna need just a couple of packs of these. Or you go pick up a sticker pack at any of your craft stores in whatever font you want, and you use that. These are great budget-friendly alternatives to the Cricut. And yes, there is another or. Or you can head on over to Linda's Etsy store and you can find the decal that I am using in today's DIY available for one instant digital download. If you've got a Cricut, you're gonna go that option. You're gonna download that to your computer, upload it to Cricut Design Space, and you're gonna cut it out using some of Dollar Tree's vinyl. Or, oh my word, there's another or. You can have her cut and send them to you with free shipping for the bargain price of $5. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store, guess where? Yes, in the description box below. And so to the bindings of these books, instead of titles, I wanted to go with an inspirational saying because I am all about kindness. And so in a world where you can be anything, be kind. I love that saying, don't you? We are so not done yet. These stacked books need a finishing touch and that finishing touch would be twine. Now I know some may be saying, wait a minute, Kelly, you have a hollowed out book in there. How are we gonna get access to that hollow book? Well, I'm not gluing the twine onto the books themselves. I glued the end of the twine onto another piece of twine that I had wrapped around the book. So you can slide the twine on and off to get access to your hollowed out book. Where there is twine, there must be a twine bow. Yes, that's a Kelly Barlow quote. And I am gluing the bow onto the twine itself so I can still remove the twine from the books. Dollar Tree's got these nautical wood beads, amazing. But they do have these boat embellishments on them that I don't much need. And so yes, I am taking some needle nose pliers and breaking them off. I know I could very well unstring the beads and take them off and save them, but I'm not doing that tonight. I'm kind of in a hurry and I don't need these. So yes, I'm just doing this because I want to keep this DIY moving. That's what I do sometimes. Now I've got a string of beads here that I can just tie together. And where are these beads going to go? Uh, they're just going to go either sitting on the top of the book or on the side because why not? Because I can and I like beads and I think beads are a fun embellishment to add. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's go take a look. What a fun DIY. Not only was it fun, but it was budget friendly, would make for a great gift to give and I want to make more of these and gift them. I think that this is going to be a Christmas gift this year. I love these. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Jamie, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY glue gun holder using Jenga blocks. Jamie, I absolutely love what you did with this. I love the red truck and the distressing. A job well done. Thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. Not only is this an awesome decor piece, but it serves as a piece where you can store something special it would make a perfect gift to give, a perfect budget-friendly gift to give. Who wouldn't love to receive a book like this that serves for two purposes, a decor piece and maybe a nice safe hiding place. I hope you all enjoyed today's book DIY. Please make sure to give this video, yes, a big thumbs up. And let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of those thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please. And bye for now, everybody.